Hey everyone, I'm going to be going over the data path extension problem that was given out on my discussion sections quiz that I TA for. I hope that by going over this problem, it will give everyone a better understanding on how to tackle these problems as data path extension is a relatively new concept for everyone and therefore it's been quite difficult for some of you. So I hope by the end of this, it will be a lot clearer on how to tackle these problems. And I also have to apologize too, I've been quite sick, and therefore my voice has been quite sucky, so I apologize um, if it uh, kind of sucks throughout the video. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so first things first, before we even look at the problem, um, I just want to say that um, go, when you go into these uh, uh, data path extension problems, you always want to have in the back of your mind, I need to use a mux because a mux is pretty much always the answer to being able to solve these problems. Um, in addition to possibly pulling in other components like the ALU to kind of help you in that endeavor, but having these, um, having uh, being able to choose uh, among different uh, operators is something very important. So uh, keep that in mind uh, when you uh, um, go into these problems that the mux. Is, is pretty much always the answer. All right, so here's the problem. Extend the data path figure to support the instruction JR plus four. This instruction uh, jumps to the address in the register RS plus four. All right, so the entire problem is setting the PC register with the data that comes out of RS and adding four to that. That's all the problem is. So we're going to go ahead and draw it out on the diagram, and then we're going to go ahead and fill out the corresponding table with the control signal types. All right, so we first have to go ahead and extend our MIPS decoder to encompass this uh, new instruction signal. So. I'm going to plop that one in there. And so whenever we get um, a JR plus four instruction um, as we uh, from our instruction memory, uh, this line will go high indicating that we are uh, processing a JR plus four instruction. All right, so I've kind of zoomed in up here because this is where the important kind of business happens. So as you see, we have RS data which is the data coming out of the register file. And so we need to now take that data and we need to add four to it, and then we need to push it into the PC register. So we're going to, one way of doing it, and this is the way that I'm gonna do it, um, is to pull in another ALU, um, hard code that to only add and then, um, and then have one of the other operands um, be uh, the number four to add four and the RS data. So I'm gonna plop the ALU in there to hard, uh, hard code it to add. And then I'm gonna take the line from RS data <clears throat> and then I'm going to hard code the other operand uh, to be four. So now what's coming out of this ALU is RS data plus four. Now that's what that's the first part of the problem. Now we need to push that into the PC register. We need now to change the PC register to be this value. And so we're going to do that now through a mux. And so we're going to route the output of the ALU into the other operand of this mux. And then our control signal is simply just going to be JR plus four. So when we get a JR plus four instruction, when that line goes high, we're gonna be taking the ALU, um, uh, the, uh, the RS data plus four, the data that's coming out of that new ALU that we just uh, plopped into our diagram there. <clears throat> so therefore, it is then going to set the PC register val uh, value um, uh, to that new value. <clears throat> And that's simply it. This is, this is, for this problem, that is all you have to do. Now, there are other ways to being able to do it. You can extend the main ALU down below, 
but there's uh, it's a lot more convoluted um, that way. And during these, uh, or while you when you tackle these types of problems, and even during the midterm, for example, I suggest choosing the easiest possible solution. And therefore, in my honest opinion, I think adding muxes and ALUs um, instead of extending um, the functionality of existing muxes and ALUs there is uh, a very clear-cut way to be able to accomplish these problems most effectively. Um, and so therefore, um, I like just adding in muxes and ALUs. Um, so I think that's the best way how to solve these. But yeah, that's everything. So let's move on to filling in the actual uh, signal table for all these uh, controls. So the first one we're going to look at is uh, this signal up here, the control type. And this, uh, this MUX right here is used to configure our PC register. But because we, over, uh, we jumped over that MUX, <clears throat> we're, we're ignoring it uh, essentially by adding in this new MUX up here. We don't actually care about that, uh, what this value is. It could be uh, 3, it could be 2, it could be 1, it could be 0. It doesn't matter because once JR plus 4 goes high, we're, we're changing the PC register to be uh, uh, what is in the option of 1 of this MUX here no, uh, all the time. So uh, therefore, we're actually ignoring uh, the MUX we just jumped over. And so therefore, we don't care about this value there. So therefore, <clears throat> uh, we're just going to, I'm just going to put an X in that column. I don't care if it's 3, 2, 1, 0. It doesn't matter. Um, so therefore, um, you can simply just put an X here to indicate doesn't matter. So the next one we're going to talk about is RD source. So RD source is right here. And because we're not doing anything with really the register file in general, we don't care about what the destination number is. Um, and so therefore, we don't care about configuring that destination. So RD source can be 0 or 1. Doesn't matter. So therefore, we can put another X where the value of RD source would be. It could be 1, it could be 0. Doesn't matter. Decoder could make it anything. Now, one we do care about is the writing able bit. <clears throat> we, since we're not doing anything with the register file, we don't want to write into any arbitrary register locations with, uh, um, that could overwrite crucial data. So therefore, we actually want to make this write enable bit be zero. Um, and, uh, and, and so we're going to go ahead and write zero in the value table for write enable. We don't want to overwrite anything. Um, and that's why we're putting a zero in that column. All right. So kind of the same thing with RD source, ALU source two, since we're not using the main um, ALU up here um, in our actual uh, um, circuit here. We don't actually care about configuring the B input for that. So ALU source can be anything. It can be 0, can be 1. doesn't matter. So we're just going to put an X in that column too. LUI, we don't care about this signal as well too. It is um, when the decoder is, uh, gets a JR plus 4 instruction, it will make the LUI line go, uh, go down to zero, um, but, but it could make it go up to one. It really doesn't matter in this case um, because we've already configured the write enable bit to be zero. It could, it, the RD data can be essentially anything. That, that, that number there is not going to affect the operation uh, of, of what a JR plus four instruction is. Um, so therefore, we can actually just plop um, an X in this column for LUI. All right, next. Same type of understanding with the ALU source 2. We're not configuring this AL, this, um, the main ALU of our machine. So therefore, we don't care what operation we're doing with this ALU here. It could be doing add, subtract, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put an X in that column as well too. <coughs> All right. Same understanding with LUI. We don't care about this value here because this MUX plays no crucial role 
in, um, in our actual instruction and it's not affecting any existing data in our machine. So therefore, this could be a zero or it could be a one. It really doesn't matter. But uh, keep in mind, uh, you know, keep in the back of your mind, some people have pointed out in, for example, my discussion section that, yeah, uh, the decoder will make SLT um, go down to zero. We don't need to indicate that in our, um, our, in our actual table. Um, you can just simply write an X because it's not important whether, uh, whether the value is zero or one. All right, again, same type of understanding with memread, with all the other muxes we've kind of been going uh, over so far. We don't care about what this value is. Um, uh, so it, it could be a zero, it could be a one. Um, so therefore, um, we can simply just put an X in that column. All righty. <clears throat> uh, same type of deal with mem you know, byte load as in memread. Uh, we don't care about this value that we're pulling. We could pull the 32-bit, um, the whole 32-bit, or we could just pull the byte. doesn't matter um, because the, the stuff that's coming out of the data memory is arbitrary. Because we're not doing anything with the register file or any of the data coming out of the data memory um, uh, in terms of our instruction, we don't care about this actual byte here or the, the, this control signal here. All right, so the next one, word write enable. This one is very important because we do not want to write into an arbitrary location into data memory. So what's coming out of ALU out is an arbitrary value. We don't, we can't, we don't know what this value <coughs> is necessarily. So therefore, um, we would, we would, if this bit was one, for example, we would be writing into an arbitrary location into the data memory um, with arbitrary data. And we could possibly even cause an exception to happen if, for example, a more advanced topic would be if we had paging involved and we had a, basically a page fault or a seg fault happen um, by whatever, if we put in a bad address, for example. So we, want to, we don't want to actually write in this location, therefore, um, and you know both ways we don't want to write bad data or we don't want to cause any problems and it's not crucial to what our actual original problem was so we're gonna go ahead and make this bit go down to zero in the same type of uh, deal with um, byte write enable we don't want to write an arbitrary byte into the um, that data memory and so therefore we want to um, we want to go ahead and uh, lower, uh, make this line go down to zero, uh, indicating we're not going to enable any writing um, for a byte. So, therefore, <coughs> excuse me, um, that's it. Uh, that's the entire problem there. We started with drawing out the problem on the diagram. And then uh, once, we, once we had that drawing in and we've extended the actual data path, then we went ahead and uh, um, configured all the control signals uh, for all the other muxes and inputs into other components of our actual um, uh, little mini computer. So that's it. Uh, when you're tackling these types of problems, um, this is a similar type of procedure that you're going to be going through. And just always keep in mind um, that, um, you know, the MUX is always the answer. You always want to think uh, about having to use a MUX and, uh, and always uh, extending it in the way of adding in components uh, rather than extending existing components. Uh, because I could have very easily have used the main ALU there and extended uh, the muxes there to be instead of two input muxes to be three input muxes or four input muxes. That's another way to kind of think about it. So therefore, um, the, the, the method that I go through, that's, that's the way I always think about it. And I really hope this helped everybody. Um, if you have any questions, um, you, you are always free to contact any of us. Um, and we would all be more than happy to uh, sit down with any of you to kind of help you 
um, kind of understand this um, because it's a really crucial aspect uh, to kind of understand and grasp, especially because the midterm will be coming up soon and you will have to extend a data path on that, uh, on the exam. Um, so understanding it best as possible will be crucial. Alrighty, alrighty. Have a good night, guys.